Welcome back, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. And today, we are talking about the Pacific Northwest Forest. Today, you will be able to describe how the amount of rainfall affects the types of living things found in the Pacific Northwest Forests. And you will be able to identify some of the living things in the Pacific Northwest forests. If you think back to our last lesson, we were looking at the amount of rainfall that we see falling across the United States. And according to that map, do you remember how much precipitation the Pacific Northwest region received? Yeah, it was a doozy. It was the most. More than 180 centimeters or more than 70 inches of precipitation a year. Annually means a year. And there's even some parts of this region that receive more than 250 centimeters or 100 inches of rain each year. And that is a lot of rain. So we are going to be looking at some of the living things that we would find in those Northwest forests. And immediately we can just look at our image that is the background of our page here and we can look at the caption and when it is not raining in the Pacific Northwest, the trees are still often wrapped in moisture in the form of fog. So even if it's not raining, there can and often is still fog that is hanging on the trees or is inside of the forest. So when we look at these images, we can observe and identify some of those living things found in the region. Well, obviously, we can see that there are trees there. One of the many types of trees that we would find would be this Douglas fir. Many long growing seasons with plentiful rain have allowed this Douglas fir tree to grow very tall. Another living thing, another plant that we might find in the Pacific Northwest Forest, are wildflowers, like specifically these irises. Many wildflowers, such as these irises, grow in the damp soil. So we know that this area has a lot of rainfall, which also tells us that these plants grow well in areas that have a lot of rainfall. Well, what animals live there? Again, these would be more of those living things. The sideband snail slides over the wet ground and decaying leaves on the forest floor. So this snail survives well in that very wet climate. We also have the colorful western tanger. It eats insects, fruits, and seeds. This tanager is sitting in a spruce tree in an Oregon forest. So right there, we now have just identified four specific living things in the Pacific Northwest forests. Now, we are going to read to find out how the amount of rainfall in the Pacific Northwest affects the types of organisms that live there. If you visit the Pacific Northwest, you'll see many tall trees. In fact, this region is home to the world's tallest trees. The rainy weather and mild temperatures support the growth of lush forests. Most of the trees are evergreen, which means that they keep their needle-shaped leaves all year long. Many flowering shrubs and trees, such as currants and dogwoods, also live in these forests. Wildflowers, mosses, and ferns grow in the moist soil. This forest is home to many different kinds of animals, 
from insects and amphibians to birds and mammals. So again, what are some of the animals that we are able to identify and we can specifically reference these images we have on our page? So what are some of the animals that we can specifically identify that live in the Northwest forests? Well, we can clearly identify that there is a snail and we know that there is a, there's birds that live there. So this snail, where in the forest do we think that the snail is going to live? If I look back at my caption, it says, the side banded snail slides over the wet ground and decaying leaves on the forest floor. So where in the forest does this snail live? It lives on the forest floor. What are some of the other types of animals that we may find living in this region? Well, from our text, we know we may find different types of animals, insects, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Well, will all of those live on the forest floor? Well, no, they're gonna live in various, various places in the forest floor. The birds may live in the tops of the trees. There might be insects that live up there too. There could be mammals that are moving around. And if you were to try, if you had to think specifically what specific types of mammals do you think you might see living in a forest like this? You sure could see mice. You might see deer, uh, foxes. We know that there are many rumors about other animals that may or may not be real and live in the Pacific Northwest forest. And I respect those of you who can infer what I'm talking about. Now, let's see if we can just generalize some information that we can learn about the plants of the Pacific Northwest. So what type of tree was identified that our Western red tanager is perched on? So on what type of tree is the Western tanager perched. Well, we know from our caption, it's perched in a spruce tree in the Oregon forest. Well, now, do you think a spruce tree is more likely to be tall or short? Well, we would expect the tree to be tall. We have evidence here that says, you'll see many tall trees. In fact, this region is home to the world's tallest trees. The rainy weather and mild temperatures support the growth of lush forests. So we know that because of the rainfall, it is most likely that we are getting some tall, extremely tall, world's largest, world's tallest trees growing in the Pacific Northwest forest. So let's look at our iris. Does our iris need a lot of water to survive? Well, we know that it needs water, and we know that irises, with our caption, they grow well in damp soil. So having that damp soil and a lot of rainwater is what is going to make it easier for the iris to survive. So we know that there's some amazing animals, amazing plants, some absolutely fabulous trees that are going to grow in the Pacific Northwest forest. So what can you, what can we infer about the amount of water in the air in the Pacific Northwest forest? What can we infer? We can infer there is a lot of water in the air because clouds, including fog, are liquid or frozen water in the air. We are easily able to take this information, compare it with what we know about our regions of the United States, 
our ability to read a map and understand rainfall amounts and get a really good sense of what the habitats and the environment would be like in the Pacific Northwest Forest. This is important because it lets us begin the understanding of how the Earth's climate and weather affects what can live and grow in these different regions. Your work today, you are going to be identifying some of those living things in the Pacific Northwest Forests and you are going to be describing how the amount of rainfall affects the types of living things found in the Pacific Northwest Forest. Thanks for being with me here today. I am Mr. Steyer and the, this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. I will see you later, scientists. Bye.